I wonder about the idea of positivity um, when dealing with, you know, my my upcoming death. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, and it has I have innumerable tumors in my liver, which means more than you can count. And um, you know, I'm in I'm in chemo to try to extend time for myself. And the usual with this um, drug is that it will run out of steam at around 8 to 12 months um, from the time it started. I started it in September, so that means it will kind of run out of steam or the cancer cells will mutate by about May, September 2017. And uh, people think, well, you know, you're being so positive um, that you're coping so well and all that stuff. And um, I, I think that... On the one hand, yes, I agree. I'm not uh, full, you know, I've got over the shock. And um, uh, then I went through the roller coaster, and, uh, you know, the shock was the first two weeks. Because remember, I had five years of knowing this that I might be in the 30% that, that end up with their cancer sort of returning and spreading and um, being. Uh, death sentence essentially and I you know knowing I was an immune deficient person from a very strong cancer history family history I knew that I had a reasonable chance of being in that 30 percent so and I also had that practice as a person who lost their respiratory drive in 2012 which meant that when I fall asleep my brain doesn't keep me breathing so any day that you know that that mask fell off or I fell asleep on a sofa without using my machine then that would be that and so I had already done all that adjustment um, and uh, I think that's what it's about how long did you get to make that adjustment well that's a large part of it another part of it is being being a, a very very logical person if you're very logical you know I have um, I have my pity parties and I you know I I, I go into them and then logic takes over very quickly and says you know this is probably not very constructive and have you noticed you know how much time you have this is probably not really how you want to spend your time or um gee you're crying for the moon that sounds rather futile or um you know uh, there are more constructive things you could be doing right now or things like that <laughs> um and that logical mind is a really wonderful thing. I guess I also have, um, you know, other parts of my mind that are very playful and very, um, you know, find ways to reframe things. And one of those ways of reframing things was to understand that, you know, that that, uh, that this is a lease. You know, I'm leasing the car that's called my body. And... Um, uh, you know, I may have felt that I had, a, you know, permanent residency once or citizenship and then it became temporary residency and now I'm on a tourist visa uh, and tourist visas run out and when they run out you get, you, you get, you lose your country or whatever country you felt that you were in and um, yeah, so I, I will lose that vehicle, the body and I think that way of reframing um, kind of counters a lot of the taking it personally stuff or the why me or it's so unfair or you know all that kind of rhetoric and that's what it is it's rhetoric it's rhetoric and it's um yeah kind of dogma stuff and um culturally inherited stuff that goes unquestioned and there's another reason why i think i appear uh, so positive and that is I have I've journeyed very far <laughs> I've lived a very um, I've lived a life that I'm really you know I've had a lot of experiences and I've been through a lot of changes and a lot of transition and I feel it's been a very lived life and I don't have anything that I really felt I hadn't done or um and absolutely no regrets and part of that is being a Taoist so I, I don't feel like oh I should have this or oh that was so bad because I clearly can see 
how much of the really positive things have come from what may have seemed really negative. And um, uh, for example, a failed respiratory drive means that when I'm towards, you know, the end and, and it's quite uncomfortable and in the case of liver metastases, you know, it's kind of going to be like being crushed from the inside. Um, and then the ability to fall asleep and not keep breathing is a fabulous thing, even though of itself it may seem a really terrible thing that, that you develop something like that, especially in my case where it, it, its origins was in things like early suffocation abuse um, at the hands of an abuser and uh, being given Valium and gin between age two and four years old that started the ball rolling with a failed respiratory drive and that finally went kaput in 2012. But So you can see that's an example of something that seems really negative but ends up being the most, the greatest gift that you can imagine. Um, and I, on that basis I I can't, I can't live a life that looks at things as, you know, absolutely negative or absolutely positive because you never know, um, you never know how that stuff might end up working differently. And uh, so that is another part of this thing that presents as positivity. I guess, um, you know, I feel really, really lucky as well. Um, I have known uh, to what it is to be very loved. I've known what it is to really know myself and be confident in myself and to understand enough that I don't need to be bothered with forgiving because what's the point of forgiving people? You have to be above them, somehow judging them in order to forgive them. It's better to wish for understanding and I understand the world and, and I understand, you know, I understand I have my understanding of the world, therefore there's nothing in it that I need to forgive. I have my understanding of other people, including people who have been abusive. And that means that I don't have to consider about forgiving for I understand. Um, I um, understand myself and therefore there's nothing that I need to regret or forgive about myself. Um, so I think that comes across as being quite positive or ready or able to transition or adjust. Um, there are things like um, uh, yeah, there are things like um, relationship to the body, and um, and as an autistic person, I didn't ever take the body personally. Um, it was just my vehicle and I often felt trapped in it, you know, with exposure anxiety as a sort of involuntary self-protection thing for my first 40 years. Um, I felt that I really desperately wanted to be able to get rid of the body so that I would not be made to exist within it and feel that people could interact with me and pull me into the world through it. Um, I don't feel like that now. I got used to it as as my vehicle. I get used to um, living comfortably in it and answering its needs uh, as my needs, as its needs. But with that being a huge foundation, when when I learned, okay, now it's really um, we've really turned a corner, and and the body isn't, um, you know, it's 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 on its way out. Um, I just I didn't take it as personally as perhaps somebody who had spent their whole life, I am my body, I am my body, I am my body, look at me, look at me, uh, I need to make me look better, I need to give this presentation, I, you know, of, of my body, blah, blah, blah. And I think I was more flexible about that than, than many, like, you know, uh, when I was about nine or ten years old, I was on top of a big six foot fence in front of all the, the traffic uh, wearing my underpants on my head and singing arias and I, when I was in my 20s I stood in the airport sort of rubbing this uh, fluffy jumper saying this feels nice you know over my fully formed breasts which I obviously had cut off as part of breast cancer 2011 so it shows that you know no real uh, clear awareness of um, Oh, a different awareness of the body really to 
perhaps uh, many uh, non-autistic people. And uh, that whole thing of, you know, my conscious experience of me, oh, well, you know, when I lose the body, I won't be able to run my brain, I will stop having conscious experiences of my life, I'll stop having my thoughts, my feelings, blah, blah, blah. Well, A, I believe that everything that I experience um, ends up uh, also in some ways exuding out of me and hopefully having some uh, connection with the world around me and that becomes a lasting uh, imprint and legacy of who I am, of my, my spirit that lives on out there. So my capacity to be consciously aware of it is sort of kind of greedy and possessive and uh, as an autistic person I spent the first years uh, having very little conscious awareness of my thoughts and feelings and experiences. I lived in each moment and there was no real accumulation effect and then as I began to gain conscious awareness with it came such fight flight that I actively created as many strategies as possible to avoid uh, conscious awareness of my own existence and um, it comes at a price <laughs> and uh, then eventually um, of course uh, I overcame the exposure anxiety with a lot of strategies and also medication that repatterned my brain out of the fight flight over 10 years and um, uh, but as an artist I strive to uh, to reduce uh, or even eliminate that conscious awareness of what I think, what I feel, what I'm experiencing right now in order to allow the art to come through me and then uh, from the outside call to me, talk to me, dialogue with me and as an artist, you know, whether it's um, a visual artist or a musician or a writer and then then, then my, my interaction with it would be to sculpt what's coming back at me but try not to gain too much conscious awareness of it because if I did it would become stilted and contrived and controlled and, and uh, you know, too, just not, uh, not the free expression that as an expressionist, um, you know, was important to me. And so these things may look like positivity uh, but to me they are, well, they're probably positivity and I am a person who is very glass half full and I am a person who, um, you know, who is fairly sparkly and, um, and I do, uh, yeah, I am a positive person but a lot of why I appear so positive about my situation is not bravery or necessarily just positivity it's more complex than that and I hope that that gives some idea of where it comes from um, yeah that's it <laughs>